السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد Welcome back to the third session The third key out of the seven keys to success The third key is focus Focus on what you control or can control directly or indirectly I want to begin by one of my quotes it is not how much you know but how much you do that makes the critical difference it is not how much you know but how much you do that makes the critical difference i don't think this needs elaboration just reflect on it just knowing something will not help you practicing it doing it applying it these are the things that are required if you want that knowledge to be beneficial this is true for religious knowledge for deen and it is equally true for the knowledge of this world i want you to ask yourself a question the question is what will you be remembered for imagine that you've died and now it's a few years later what will you be remembered for In 1631 the foundation of a building was laid and this building was finally completed in 1648 from 1631 to 1648 in 1636 which is 5 years after the foundation of the first building had been laid the foundation of another building was laid in another part of the world today both buildings exist the first one has two occupants both dead the second one spews out those who run the world those who rule the world come out of the second building can you guess which two buildings i'm talking about the first one is the taj mahal in india in agra and the second one is harvard started as a college then university in boston massachusetts my submission to you is that we as muslims need to get out of our nostalgia trip we live in the past and we constantly quote the golden era ask what people in 2300 we are now in 2021 ask what people in 2300 will say when they speak about our era what do you think they would say what do you want them to say because the reality is that the achievements of others do not define us what anyone else did in the past is for them if it was good it's for them if it was bad it's still for them what is for us is what we do and that's the question i ask myself and the question i want you to ask yourself is what is it that you are doing today and what will be the impact of that what is your legacy test how many books did you read this year we are now in october coming to a close 10 months of the year have passed in 10 months how many books did you read My question to you is do you want to leave a legacy behind because this is a choice you can choose to live like the friendly neighborhood cow eat drink make a few babies die nobody knew that you ever existed that actually would not be a bad existence frankly speaking because the cow does not do any evil but we being human we have to add in that part which is committing of sins disobedience of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on and so forth and then you die you leave no mark behind and you stand before allah jalla jalaluhu the glorious and the magnificent to account for what we chose to do or we chose to live out so decide for yourself do you want to leave a legacy behind if the answer is yes stay here if the answer is no and count yourself lucky it's just 4 minutes and 57 seconds leave 
I am speaking to those who are still here. Let me describe for you two scenarios. What's new in this world and what of the old is still true? What's new in today's world? First and foremost is rapid change, chaos. Now, some of that got accelerated because of COVID. Completely unexpected, came out of, literally came out of the blue and we still haven't come to grips with it. For God's sake, we still haven't figured out whether we should take vaccines or not. Alhamdulillah, I'm completely and fully vaccinated, both the Pfizer vaccine and the booster shot. We rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalla for our safety, but we take precautions because this is what we have been mandated to do by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So chaos, rapid change, unexpected change, upheaval, totally taking old concepts, old systems, old theories and putting them upside down on their heads. That's one element of today's new world. Second one is choices. Huge cho number of choices, maximum variety of choices. Some unbelievable choices. And number three is technology. And one of the effects of technology is speed. Speed of, re of response. Let's look at these three things. What must you do to deal with these three things? To deal with chaos, you need, to the extent possible, the ability to foresee changes. And this is not, I'm not talking about fortune telling or tarot cards or something. I am talking about critical analysis and scenario planning. That is what we need to be able to try to foresee. And the reason for foreseeing is to be able to prepare for that in advance. Therefore, you need the ability to foresee. So critical analysis and scenario planning. You need resilience because you can't just lie down and die. You need perseverance because results would not come instantly. Results take time. It take, they take repetitive work. And then we need a lot of compassion and teamwork. Alhamdulillah, in this COVID thing, we have seen all of this and we have also seen the absence of this in many cases. All of these things should be lessons for us to learn and take home. What happens in the absence of compassion? What happens when there is compassion? We have seen how countries behave. We have seen, for example, how New Zealand behaved. And we have contrast that with how some other countries behaved. Lessons to learn. Number two choices maximum variety now just looking at career choices when i was growing up when i was in my teenage years when i was in college we literally had in india we literally had three or four choices as careers you could become a doctor which for whatever reason was the number one choice of most people you could become an engineer or you could go into the civil service of say government, right? So civil service or the military. I wanted to go into the army. I wanted to appear for the NDA course, but whatever happened, I was not allowed to do that. And uh, my father wanted me to be a doctor and I didn't want to do that. So, you know, lots of complications. Anyway, so this is, uh, this was the situation. So we are literally two or three uh, choices. Uh, I have not included here uh, being or becoming uh, a religious scholar and I am because uh, very tragically that was not anybody's choice. People became that almost by default either mostly because they had no other choice or they came from a family of ulama and so therefore that was a natural thing that they fell into. But I really don't know I mean, if I'm I hope I'm mistaken but I do not know of any case of somebody who came from a non-alim family who chose to study Islam as a career, right? And to not not to make money, but I'm just saying to to study Islam and to and to become an expert in Islamic sciences. I personally do not know anyone who did that. Today, the number of choices 
absolutely again we are just sticking with uh, careers the number of choices are absolutely incredible you got people doing all kinds of stuff which we never even imagined that we could do right um so multiple choices what we need there is again focus number one is focus and then anticipate and prepare for that so if i for example artificial intelligence and this will take me into the third third part which is technology uh, very smoothly so let's talk about that take artificial intelligence we know it is here to stay we know the we know at least we think we know the power of it we know how the applications of it what can what it can do and can't do and therefore people who are uh, focusing on that who are preparing for that who are trying to understand that who are trying to innovate in that uh, these people probably have a uh, i would say a bright future ahead because there is a it's a it's a green field uh, industry uh, and it's going to open up all kinds of possibilities so similarly the ability to anticipate um, in new areas and to prepare and uh, to focus and prepare for them which takes us into the third one which is technology as i said one of the biggest things that is that uh, biggest changes it has brought about is the uh, addiction to speed i call it addiction because quite literally i i I'm, I'm you know one of the benefits of being old is you you have a perspective of of older days and present days um the first 486 computer um desktop there weren't any laptops in, in those days uh, the one the first 486 step, uh, computer i got to me it looked like it had it was it was operating at lightning speed because the one the 386 i had before that appeared to be absolutely like a bullock cart compared to that 486 now today if i just see my phone what my my phone can do my smart my smartphone can do a room full of 486 computers couldn't do that and the speed of this is you know Amazing. I mean, the, the the RAM of my phone is is uh, is like maybe a hundred times or a thousand times bigger than the RAM of that four eight six machine, which was a big machine like that. If you ask me, do you really need that speed? Answer straight answer is no. But if I do not have that speed, I will be very upset. Not literally, but I'm saying that I would feel that oh, I'm losing something. I mean, you know, why is it why is it so slow? So also with, with Wi-Fi. Now, where I am sitting here in America, we've got 5G. But 5G looks like normal. Like we used to operate with 2G or 3G in India. So this addiction to speed. Now, what does that do? What one of the big things it has done is it has reduced our levels of patience. Now, that is very important because patience is a virtue which is I cannot even, I can't even sort of describe for you how important that is. In life, in human relations, in in, in that context, with marriages, with uh, raising of children, you name it. Lack of patience is a very major problem. And lack of patience is now almost built into the system as far as we are concerned because uh, of the addiction to speed. And so I would say, don't get enslaved to speed. It gives a, a, a false impression of reality. Second thing which, which uh, the speed of response has done is that thanks to, again, social media and so on and so forth, it gives the illusion of work. For example, we, we forward a message to 50 people and, and we think we have achieved something. You've achieved nothing. First of all, those 50 people probably, if they have any sense, they will not even read that message. Some of them will not have that sense and they will read the message, so they will they will waste some more of their time. So you wasted some time, they will waste some time, they will forward it to another 50 people. And this will just continue, but whatever your message related to on the ground will still remain. If you were talking about the 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 people dying of hunger in Yemen, they are still dying of hunger. Not a piece of bread has gone to them thanks to this 50 multiplied by 50 times messages that have been flying around on Facebook or on WhatsApp or whatever. Illusion. The illusory nature of the world has, technology has made it even more illusion. And of course, technology has huge, huge, huge benefits uh, where many, many things are today possible thanks to technology. 
one of which is a seminar like this which is viewed globally without people actually spending any money anything like this to be done face to face physical presence would have required you know thousands of dollars uh, having to be spent and time and so on and so forth people flying from all over the world but here now you are watching this uh, you will be watching it on on uh, on youtube live or, where, or whichever way and uh, you know 200 people now imagine if, if having holding a seminar for a few hundred people with everyone coming to one place compared to doing it on zoom or doing it like this i mean you know there's no comparison so it, this is one of the many ways in which technology has impacted us including of course teledoc and this and that so many things now having said all this and i'm not here trying to give you a, a exhaustive uh, description of the new things in this world but just to get you you know get you give you a taste of that and, and the idea of all of these seminars is for you to think on your own and, and develop them more what of the old still remains what of the old is still true there are five things i think which are still true the first one is the importance of clarity clarity of understanding of something i want you to rate yourself on this clarity of understanding clarity of your goal clarity of what you need and what you have how do you get that by perspective what's perspective perspective is a product of history and current situation without understanding history you cannot you can never have perspective because we don't understand from where we are coming and where we are going and usually the current situation is obviously it's a current situation so it's very immediate and it tends to overshadow everything else history is what prevents that from happening and gives us perspective so that we understand it in the context in which it should be understood so the first one is clarity second one is focus and focus in terms of goal clarity especially what do you want to achieve that's the reason i asked you do you want to leave behind a legacy what is that legacy one line statement we began this seminar series with talking about life goals defining life goals did you do that till now those of you who have been following to up <clears throat> so please give this some thought don't, don't just sit on it you know do something about it focus goal clarity third one is dedication whatever is worth having is worth working for and anything which is worth having will take time to come and that is what is dedication dedication is discipline plus hard work very very critical to understand that discipline and hard work not hard work on one day continuous that's why i am i'm such a a uh, hardcore fan of routines and structure put your life into a routine and have a structure that's the best way of ensuring that your time is well spent if there is no routine your time will just go time will just pass you will have nothing to show for it and you will be that many days older that many days close to your death don't do that to yourself create routines positive routines and put your life in a structure don't worry about the feeling that oh my spontaneity will go and i will have no freedom no you will have far more freedom you will have far more spare time and you you can be far more spontaneous if you have put yourself into a structure and have a positive routine number 4 i mentioned it already which is structure and the structure with regard to your road map and your schedule every night before going to bed write down what did i achieve today write down keep up keep an old pad next to your bed write down sit on your bed and write what did i achieve today in the morning when you get up write down what are my goals today what must i do today and in the night when you come back down you will assess yourself on that don't make excuses if you did not achieve your goal because of your bad planning or your bad uh, structure of time then write that down this is not to show anybody it's for yourself if you are fooling if you are telling lies if you are making excuses remember you are saying that to yourself is that good up to you think about that number 5 is metrics what you do not measure you do not know what you don't measure you do not know. 
to monitor your work. Give yourself feedback, seek feedback from others. That will give you an idea of how you are doing, going along. I want to share with you my motto in life, which is, I will not allow what is not in my control to prevent me from doing what is in my control. I will not allow what is not in my control to prevent me from doing what is in my control. There are five critical needs to succeed. Talking about focusing on what we can control. So measure yourself on each of them. How are you good with that? And then see where to go. And these are the five things that I mentioned to you, each of them. The importance of clarity. How to get clarity. Three things. Define success. What does success mean to you? And ask yourself, how real is that? Can you taste it in your mouth? Define your success. And if that definition is completely material, then ask yourself, where does Allah factor into this? Where does my hereafter factor into this? Where does standing before Allah on the Day of Judgment when I am resurrected, where does that factor into this? Ask yourself that question, right? To define success. Number two, who is your success role model? And what do you know about that person? Because if you are looking at a success role model, it gives you some kind of a framework to focus on. So what do you know about that person? And number three is what you need to do to become successful. What's your strategy? You're defining success. You're looking at a role model. You're saying, what is my strategy going forward? Which includes, of course, roadmap and metrics and a timeline. I want to repeat, focus is the art of ignoring luck. Today, one of the biggest problems we have is that we are flooded, we are completely drowned in information. And most of us have no clue how to deal with that information, how to process that information. What of that information is beneficial, what is not beneficial, we have no idea. So we get, we get swayed. One way or the other. Mind steering today is big business. So, focus. Three things to think about. One, how many times a day do you think of your goal? And that will show you whether it's a goal or merely a wish. Your life goal, how many times a day do you think about this life? Number two, what are you reading currently? And what is on your reading list? We started a book club. And we don't seem to be able to get more than three members in it. Just think about that. How tragic is that? And if you think that you're going to succeed in life without upskilling yourself, without upgrading yourself, without having the humility to learn from somebody, without reading, Good luck to you. Try, yourself, try it out. See if it works. And know that by the time you realize that it doesn't work, it will be too late to change yourself. Number three, what does your time la- uh, timetable look like? Do you have a timetable? Do you follow the timetable? Let me ask you a question which I use as a, as a diagnostic tool. Do you make your bed in the morning when you get up? Do you polish your shoes? And don't say, I wear sneakers. No. Do you do that? That will indicate to you whether you have focus or not. And final question is, who are your friends? Who are your friends? And why are they your friends? The reality is, we are, as they say, we are the product of the five people who are closest to us. If those five are are losers, you will be the sixth loser. If those five are focused on things which are non-productive or things which are negative, that's how you are going to be. So ask yourself, who are my friends and why are these people my friends? What's the reason? Your reason, not their reason. 
Number three is dedication. Who is your role model for dedication? And do you follow me? It's simply not good enough to simply say, oh, it is Nelson Mandela, it is, uh, you know, this one, that one, it is Aswal Lai Sarasarab. No. If that is indeed true, then do you do what they were doing? Do you do what they do? Do you do, you do what they used to do? Do you follow me? Three questions, again, to see if we have dedication. How many hours a day do you sleep? You sleep eight hours a day. That is 33% of your life. And if you are telling me that 33% of your life you don't need to become successful, try it. 33% of your life, if you're sleeping eight hours a day, and if you tell me that eight hours a day is necessary to be healthy, well, I don't want to talk anything, say, say anything more about that. Second thing is your health. Do you work out daily? I'm not talking about bodybuilding. I'm saying do you work out daily? Is there a routine that you follow every day? You work out, you exercise, you go for a walk, you go to the gym, whatever. Do you do that? And for how long? You should have at least a 30-minute workout every single day, without exception. You should, you should focus on your diet, eat healthy, completely get out of all sugar. Once in a while have a dessert, no problem, but sugar, in, especially in sodas, Coke, Pepsi, all of these, make them haram on yourself. Do not, this is just pure self-indulgence, it is addiction and it is harmful. I won't even talk about substance abuse. I won't even talk about smoking. I won't talk about, uh, you know, drugs, even though in some countries they are legal. I mean, this is just a, a non-brainer. Anyone who is smoking, uh, uh, anyone who is, uh, you know, using any tobacco stuff, uh, good car, there's that. Anyone who is, uh, who, who drinks alcohol, anyone who is on marijuana, these, these are not, these are losers. These are complete and total losers. So let's not talk about that. It's a waste of time. So, sleep how many hours a day? Number two is, what evidence of discipline is there in your day? Simple question to ask is, how do you deliver on promises? And ask your customers, ask those people who you work with, if they are happy with the way you deliver on promises. And please understand, just saying, oh, but you see, I'm working very hard, doesn't cut any ice with anybody. People are interested in results, not in how hard you're working. Many times you work hard because you're working inefficiently. You're working unnecessarily hard. It's not necessary to work that hard. Number three is, what are you doing daily, 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 daily to develop yourself? Every day. And in what area? Intellectually, morally, spiritually, health-wise, economically. What are the areas in which you are developing yourself? And what are you doing every day in this context? Right? Number four is structure. What is your strategy for success? Do you have it written down? Do you have a roadmap with timelines? So, life goal, what's the strategy? What's the roadmap? What are the timelines? Number two, do you do an annual review or appraisal for yourself? Does somebody else do it for you? Do you do it for yourself? How do you, otherwise, how else do you monitor achievement? Right? Number three is, name three things that you did this year. As I said, we are in the 10th month. Name three things that you did this year to improve yourself in whichever aspect. Was it planned or did it just happen accidentally? Even if it happened accidentally, alhamdulillah, good for the good for you. But if you had planned it, you could probably have achieved it and done it better. Three things that you did to develop yourself. Because please understand, reliability is something which is uh, a product of structure and reliability is the foundation of trust. Number four and, and final, metrics. How do you know you're succeeding? What are the metrics? As I told you, unless you know, unless you measure, you don't know. 
So what are the metrics of success? This will depend on your life goal. Going backwards to that, and think what are the this is all all of this comes under focusing on what you can control and what you can influence. So what are the metrics of your success? Number two, because only what you measure you can guarantee. And expertise is repeatability. So remember that expertise is repeatability. And if you want to repeat something, you need to know what you did. So unless you measure, you cannot guarantee. And the question to ask yourself is how many miles more to the destination? And what's your speed? How many miles per hour must you, must you travel? Success is where aspirations need preparation. Success is where aspirations need preparation. I'm going to teach you two tools very quickly. One is I call it the investment and return uh, matrix. You have two investment on the x-axis, on the y-axis and return on the x-axis. You got four possibilities. You have high investment, low return, all activities. Take your take your day and map it onto this. High investment meaning takes a lot of time, energy, emotion, money, whatever. High investment, low return, delete it, remove those from your life. That's the top left corner. Then you have high investment and high return. These are the long term activities. Exercising, reading, long term planning, <clears throat> investments, long term investments, all of these come under that. High investment, high return. Coming straight down is low investment, high return. Those are the key aspects. Those are leverage action, leverage activities. Two rakat of tahajjud will connect you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the effort required? Practically nothing. What is the return? Connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Coming, coming down to the bottom corner, low investment, low return are things which is best to outsource to somebody else. This matrix work on works on Pareto's principle which is that 20% of what you do gives you 80% of the results. So look at your activities in life and say, which of these are high return activities? Do those which are low return, leave them, outsource them or don't do them at all. Second model I want to share with you in the same context of focus is that life is math. Life is an equation. An equation has two parts. And there is an output which is the product of these two parts. Any equation. In life, one part is handed over to us, is given. We have no control over that. The second part is in our control. Right? Second part is in our control. Now, what we are handed over to us, as I said, we have no control. How we choose to look at it, how we choose to interpret it, what we choose to deal with it, all of this is in our control. So, just to make give you a very simple example, 2 plus 4 equals 6. Because the outcome is the result of the interaction between these two parts of the equation. 2 plus 4 is 6. If I want this 6 to be 8, what must I do? I must up my game. And instead of by 2, I must now have 4. If I do 4, then 4 plus 4 is 8. And so forth. We control one side. But what we do, by changing what we do, we can still get the result that we want. Even though the second side is not in our control. That is why my principle, I will not allow what is not in my control to prevent me from doing what is in my control. I will not allow what is not in my control to prevent me from doing what is in my control. Finally, just want to share a thought with you, which is, the only way to get is give. We are all focused on get. I want this, I, I want to get this, I want to get that, I want to, I want money, I want friends, I want influence, I want to be trusted, I want to be loved. I want to be influential, all this, get, 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 get influence, get love, get uh, trustworthiness, get friends, you know. But remember, 
None of this is in Walmart. If you want to get these things, you have to give. So this is some food for thought for you. If you want trust, then become a steel trap. Keep people's confidences. Hide other people's faults. If you want caring, if you want people to care for you, show concern for them. And not just show meaning, pretend. No, genuine concern, do something about it. You want people to care for you, you care for them. Number three, you want fun, laugh often. Develop a good sense of humor. Number four, if you want respect, be thankful. Be grateful. The attitude of gratitude gets you a lot of respect. You want harmony? Learn to accept differences. The more rigid you are, the more disharmony you will have in your life. Now, this does not mean that you don't insist on principles. It does not mean that you compromise your, your principles. No. But differentiate between what is worth fighting for and what is best to ignore. Number five, you want appreciation? Show appreciation. Simple as that. <clears throat> you want to appreciate what you do? You want people to appreciate what you do? So appreciate what they do. And number seven is, you want happiness? Forgive mistakes. Be very happy. We end with the same way we end everything else, which is the action plan. What will you start doing? What will you stop doing? What will you continue to do? Wish you all the best. See you two weeks from now with key number four. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.